Hey there, manifestors. Happy Tuesday. I'm Gabby, a certified neurolinguistic master practitioner, EFT, and law of assumption coach here with Create Your Future. And I am your guide on your own manifestation journey where you and I dive deep into the law of assumption and the incredible power it holds to transform your life. I'm here to help and guide you. And if you feel that you need some guidance or some support along the way, please feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. My coaching is currently 50% off. We're also giving away a free course on how to identify and remove your blocks that is in the description box below. And I also have a limitless love SP meditation available as well. That is also in the description box below. Tons of my clients are receiving so much success from that particular meditation. Everything from new SPs coming in, reuni reuniting with their um, old SPs, and so much more. So go ahead and check that out, okay? So today's video, we're going to dive into a topic that's at the very core of manifestation. And that is understanding that manifestation is about who you are being. I know I've mentioned this in a ton of my videos, but I really want to push this home for you. You being the version of you that has what you desire is really and truly the core of manifesting it into your reality. So before we jump into the nitty gritty, let's establish that is the foundational truth. Manifestation is about who you are being, okay? In this very moment, who are you being? The law of assumption teaches us that your assumptions about yourself and the world around you shape your reality. So by consistently assuming the identity of the person who has the desire, you send a very clear message of what should be pushed out into the 3D. So why do I know that this works? Well, I have a client success story. Let's dive in. Just want to pull it up for you here. Okay, she starts. Hey, Gabby. Again, just wanted to say a big thank you for your support with coaching. I have learned so much from CYF over the years, and I feel that my session with you was the final piece of the puzzle. Thank you so much. You know who you are. It took me a, get, a bit to get my head around the concept that manifesting with law of assumption could be so easy, especially when I had spent years in the ongoing loop of using techniques and affirming to manifest. I would often manifest things in, but found they were not exactly what I wanted, or they would quickly leave. And I found myself getting increasingly frustrated and in trying to figure out where I was going wrong. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. This is something that a lot of my clients come to me about. They have been engaging in um, overuse of techniques or focusing on techniques as the thing that will get them their manifestation. That is not what techniques are for. Techniques are to move you into the desired state or the version of you who already has your desire. They're just to help you mentally shift, okay? So they're not what you do in order to get something. And so oftentimes my clients come to me because they have been using techniques over and over and over again with the understanding or the concept that if I do this, my thing will manifest in the 3D, my desire will come. And then they get frustrated that they don't see their desire or their desire may show up and then it doesn't stay, right? So it's not sustainable. Um, so it's really, really important that we hit on that. She went on to say, <clears throat> So when I shifted to consider the question you suggested of who am I being, I quickly realized that all this time I was manifesting from a concept of myself that was not the version of me that had my desire or where I actually wanted to be. And that's when things really started to change. My head still resists just how easy this can be. I realized that all I would be thinking if I had my perfect version of my SP would be how grateful and blessed I felt to have him as my partner and how much I loved him. So this is really important. What she's saying here is that when she started asking herself the question of who am I being, which as I've shared before in my other videos, when you ask your brain a question, your brain will search for the answer. She realized that she was not being the version of her who had her desire. So she started to push herself into that by asking herself that question. Then when she realized she was not being that version, she told herself her new story. And in doing that, she shifted. She herself shifted internally in here. So what had to happen? It had to push out externally in the 3D. She went on to say, as I continued to just sit with those thoughts and what it would look like to have that experience, he finally started to show up differently. He is more warm, calm, and loving to me now than he has been for over a year. I'm no longer perceiving his behavior to be rejection, and I'm no longer finding myself having thoughts of him rejecting me. 
I'm also not affirming to keep things in place, and he is surprising me every day with how he responds to things, even when I didn't specifically affirm for it. I also no longer fear my thoughts. Okay, so I'm going to pause here. Two things. The first one, when she says she's no longer perceiving his behavior to be rejection, what she has done is she has shifted herself into the state of having her desire. So she shifted herself into being the version of her who has her desire. When she does that, it's almost like putting on a pair of glasses. You are perceiving the external world around you and those around you differently. You're perceiving them from the version of you who already has your desire. So if you before thought that you were being rejected, you're not seeing that, right? Because the version of you who has your desire isn't thinking from the state of rejection in any way, shape, or form. The other thing she mentions here, she no longer fears her thoughts. So this is something that we talked a lot about in coaching. Thoughts are like clouds. Do you remember when you were a little kid and you would look up at a cloud and you would say, oh, that looks like a dog, or I think that looks like a car, or, you know, that one looks like a guy carrying a bag or whatever. When you put your focus and your awareness on that cloud, you start to see a shape and you give it meaning. Thoughts are the same thing. You have almost 80,000 thoughts a day. You can choose which thoughts you're going to consciously grab and interact with. What are you going to grab and make to mean to be true for you? You can think, oh, I'm rejected. Oh, this is why I'm rejected. And you can start listing off all the reasons because you're playing and interacting with that thought. Or you can see your thought as just a cloud passing by. So if you just look up and see, oh, I just have thoughts. I don't have to play with it. Yeah, that's a thought. Yeah, it was a thought I used to think all the time. I don't think it anymore. Thanks for showing up again. Bye. See you later. Don't want you around. It's just as easy as that. Okay. You choose. You choose which thought you're going to interact with and you choose which thought you give meaning to. Okay. Let's dig in more to this um, success story. She goes on to say, I'm grateful for your approach as I found it actually works with my mind and it honors how my mind works. I don't feel like I'm constantly at war with myself anymore. I have a, um, sorry, I want to give that information away. She says, um, your approach was so easy to accept because it made sense for me and how I know the human mind operates. So I'm going to keep going, to keep going using the baby steps as you suggested and continue to ask myself, who am I being? No more flipping thoughts, scripting, or robotic affirming. They all totally work, which they do. Techniques do work. Um, but this just seems so much easier and has actually changed me as a person. I find I no longer am checking the 3D and constantly being pleasantly surprised as my 3D conforms. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for your help. So grateful for your help and guidance. You are so welcome. You know who you are. <laughs> so that's it. That's it, beautiful co-creators. That is it. That is how you do it. So remember this. Manifestation really and truly just boils down to who you are being. Embrace your desired story until you feel it. It's almost... As if I had a client share with me, it's that feeling of when you bite into a roll right out of the oven, that warm, you know, yummy, content satisfaction feeling that you get. That's what you're going to do. You're going to tell yourself the new story until you feel that, until you feel satisfied, and then you're going to walk away, go about your day, okay? And then when you have to tell yourself the new story, you're going to do it again until you feel that feeling, okay? So if you enjoyed this, please go ahead, like, and subscribe. If you need some help, go ahead and book that one-on-one -on -one coaching at 50% off. And let me know in the comments what your experiences are about becoming the version of you or the person of you who has your desire and how you did that. Until next time, keep being the person you wish to become. Bye. See you next week.